Hi Oslo users, this is the first in a very important video set on getting rays aimed correctly into Oslo or using Oslo's ray aiming modes. So the motivation is that the most common mode in Oslo has the user to find the light entering the system. In other programs like Trace Pro, uh, you might define a source and then light comes out of that source and then when you put your system with it, you determine how the light goes through it. In this particular case, you're going to have a system. Um, in most cases in Oslo, you're going to have a system and you're actually going to need to define the light bundles and how they go into the system. So when you do this, you need to ask yourself, how do I know the light is correct? How can I balance ray tracing speed and accuracy in the system? And Oslo turns out it's very flexible with a number of different ray aiming mode possibilities. So um, the it's, it's intentionally set up to provide a lot of that flexibility. We do have some additional videos that are worth watching on this topic on tracing single rays, which includes a discussion on Lagrangian versus Hamiltonian rays, the Hamiltonian ray being the one that you make sure is going not only from a given point on an object, but through the correct point in the stop generally, or through the reference surface, I should say. Whereas Lagrangian or Lagrangian, you just are assuming some initial conditions. So uh, that's a very nice video. Uh, the beam footprint uh, video, the reference surface and sphere, aplanatic ray aiming, and the perfect lenses tells you how rays uh, should be launched to match the physics in many, many cases, uh, the field and pupil coordinates. So all these are good supporting videos for you to watch to improve your skills and also get better at uh, this current topic. So the ray aiming modes, this looks like there's a lot. Um, really, you can uh, almost get away with just a few of them if you really want to. Um, but I find it's, it's very nice to be able to switch back and forth between a little bit more accuracy at the expense of speed or vice versa. So uh, each of these modes will have its own video. And I'll go through them when I go through the help mode, uh, the help page in just a moment. We will also have a tutorial video using these modes and a video on uh, vignetting factors uh, as well. So uh, the tutorial video that we have um, is actually uh, supports an example that's right out of the program documentation. So there are um, some other things to, to uh, that we can look at. Uh, we're going to look at a double Gauss lens as a starting example at the end. Let's first go through uh, that list that I just showed. So. Uh, entrance pupil mode is where aims rays are aimed at the paraxial entrance pupil. And so there are some limitations, uh, quite a few limitations to using it, and it's not chosen as the default. The default is chosen to be the central reference ray, and that's uh, because that is where the ray bundle is centered on uh, the reference ray that is defining that field point. So that is the default mode. The next one, and so for the central reference ray, uh, what you do is it's basically making sure that that central ray is correct and then the one it just centers a, a, a bundle around it. It may not fill the pupil exactly perfectly, uh, but it's a good approximation in many, many cases to what the actual light bundles that fill the stop would do. Then there's a the next step up in terms of a little bit slower but um, improved accuracy in many cases is the rim reference ray mode. The rim reference ray mode is where you define not just that center uh, ray for the reference ray, but you also define the top, the bottom, the left, and the right of the pupil to go through. It's, it's also very good if you have special uh, apertures in a system. The next one beyond that is called the wide angle mode. Wide angle mode is the one that makes sure that it's tracing uh, correctly to different field points. It's really good for wide angle. It's absolutely essential when you get very large fields of view. And certainly when you get to fisheye and some, some systems like that, you absolutely have to have this. But what it's really doing is it's making sure that the pupil is being filled correctly for each field point. The negative of this, of course, is that that's tracing very many uh, rays in kind of an iterative way to make sure it's correct so it's slower. The extended aperture mode is one that you'd use for an extreme numerical aperture in the object space in particular. So we'll go through that later. And then the telecentric uh, entrance pupil mode is one that you will use if you have a finite conjugate object, but the entrance pupil is telecentric, meaning it's projected to infinity. So those are the six that will have some special 
videos for. Um, but I do want to go through here. I'd like to go through the an example just to show you, give you some idea of what this is about and how to check for it because it's not too difficult. So here is the, uh, uh, t not too difficult to do the basics and, and get into the good habits on this. So um, you need to open, uh, I'm going to use a double gauss lens. So uh, if you can't remember where it's opened, it's in the Oslo light folder here, here for the double gauss lens. And I'm going to make a few sort of quality of life improvements just for what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and turn the checking off on these two surfaces. Uh, there's actually one other funny thing with this lens that I found in just doing this. The lens in here, notice it goes to this maximum pupil of 1.1 in the drawing. So I want to make that just a 1.0 instead. So I'm showing you just a few of the changes that I'm going to use that are slightly different than the than the lens that actually comes with, with the program. So here's our, our uh, lens now. And if we take a look, you can see, oh, I've got my stop being uh, drawn but wow, look at this. Even for this axial point, I'm not quite going through uh, the edge. Now, off axis, of course, um, there might be some vignetting or something else in this case. Um, there might be or might not be. Let me just do another quick check just to give you an idea of the, some of the things you want to do. So it is indeed tracing the full pupil through. So something here is looking a little bit funny. And what well, reality is we're actually tracing the rays and telling it make sure you get that central ray right and then we'll use bundles that are approximate uh, towards the edges and you might say well why would I ever do that well it's faster so if you're doing things like tolerancing the lens do, running them on a Monte Carlo simulations doing some very significant optimization you can use this approximation the code will run a lot faster and then later you can turn on the wide angle mode or do something that's more accurate or make sure you've got the accuracy for when you really need it to do the fine tuning and make sure to correct it because let me just show you here so uh, right now we have the central ray uh, mode on. Now I'm going to change to central reference ray on. Now I'm going to change to the wide angle mode and I'm going to duplicate this same plot. You can see they're not that different. The uh, sort of low frequency characteristics of the aberrations are all pretty similar. We're just making sure now to catch some of these rays that are out towards the edge. Let me actually just show the drawing of this you can see now this is indeed going out to the edge. So it was missing that a little bit before for that off axis point, but it wasn't making that big of a difference. The other thing I can do is we can just go, or that we can do is go back into here. I'm going to do the central reference ray again. And when we come down here, I'm now going to look at through frequency MTF curves. And you can see they're really not that different at all. They are a little bit different, but not different enough that if I'm in an earlier phase or I'm in optimization that I'm too worried about it and I've got a lot more speed running in this mode um, when I'm in the central reference ray mode versus the uh, wide angle mode. One other thing that you can do with this so I've just got another graphics window open here where I've selected the spot diagram. Okay so this is the beam footprint on the first surface so actually what I want to do is I want to change it to surface six, which is the surface of the stop. So you can use the beam footprints to check on this. So here's the punchline for all of this. You're trading off speed versus accuracy. The way to check this is check to make sure that your rays are going through the system correctly. You can use beam footprints for that. You can trace rays. You can do it numerically. If you are very, very concerned, you can turn on a slower mode like the wide angle mode and then you will be sure you have uh, the accuracy. Some people I know tend to keep that mode on all the time. But you always should be vigilant that the light that you're tracing through the system is the light that you think it, that uh, is correct and that uh, you're not seeing some incorrect results because of uh, your choice in choosing speed over accuracy. So this is a good start to this topic and there are more videos. Thanks.